Father, I humble myself before you again today. I pray that you would pick me up as a microphone. I have no desire, Lord, to entertain. I have no desire, Lord, to give my concepts. But use me, Lord, today. Let me speak as the oracle of God, as your word has instructed me. Give us hearts ready to receive and be doers of the word. Speak to all of us today, but primarily, Lord, I pray that you would speak to the heart of men as we celebrate them today, as we did ladies on Mother's Day. And let your word penetrate all of our hearts today. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus and God's people said, Amen. I want to talk to you today on this Father's Day about the sons of Issachar. The sons of Issachar. First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. I want to talk about men today. On Mother's Day, we celebrated the ladies, the mothers, the wives, young, middle-aged, and old. But I want to talk to men today, and uh, contrary to popular opinion, I want to celebrate manhood today. Manhood and masculinity is under attack in the United States of America. By the media, in the culture wars, and it has even crept into the church world. But I am here to tell you that God knew what he was doing when he made male and female and fully intended for them each to have enough sense to know what bathroom to go into. He, he, come on folks, I'm just warming up. Just, just, just keep breathing in and out. There is an attack today on masculinity. There is an attack on manhood. And I want to talk to you today about the sons of Issachar. Seven characteristics of the sons of Issachar that I believe describes the kind of man that God wants his men in these last days to be. Now Issachar was one of the twelve patriarchs. He was not really wanted at first. In fact, Leah had to pay Rachel for Jacob to sleep with her so she could conceive Issachar. Can you imagine being born into a world that your father had to be paid to even conceive you? He was not wanted. He was not appreciated. And may I just say something to you? There may be some men under the sound of my voice or watching today, and you weren't wanted. You were a surprise. Maybe your father abandoned you. Maybe you don't even know who your father was, as many in this younger generation don't. But can I tell you, God makes no accidents. Uh, You may have had to be hired, uh, but you're not a hireling. God intended for you to be born, and he intended for you to be a man in these last days. So Issachar began to have children and more children and more children. He's one of the 12 tribes. And I want to give you seven characteristics of the sons of Issachar describing godly manhood. Anybody interested, say amen. Now, you women should be interested in this, too. And not to rate your men on a scale of 1 to 10. In fact, just all the ladies in obedience right now before the Lord, say this with me. My man is a 10. Guys, you just missed your your opportunity to shout and praise the Lord right there. I mean, we've got it on tape. It's going out on YouTube. We should have had the cameras flowing. But I want to give you these characteristics. Number one, a son of Issachar, they are strong enough to carry a double load. Men of God that are strong enough to carry a double load. Genesis 49, 14, and 15. 
Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two bur burdens. And he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. The picture here is of a strong, large-boned donkey. His bones and his legs are strong and big. He's muscular. And yet there was a double load put on this donkey. And it was so heavy that he couched down underneath it. In other words, it almost broke him down. He was so burdened with the double burden that he laid down beneath the load. Watch this. Until he saw a picture of the future rest in the pleasant land of Canaan. And men, I got some news for you. Our responsibilities are big. And in these last days, they may get bigger. I have a heavy load sometimes to lead my family. I have a heavy load sometimes to lead the church. I have a heavy load sometimes to be a spiritual father under protégés. I have a heavy load sometimes to be on international television and networks. But my friend, it sometimes may bow you down. But you are a strong donkey. You understand? And sometimes the load gets heavy, guys, and you feel crushed beneath it. And the picture is this donkey is being crushed beneath it, and he just wants to lie down and quit. And can I say this? We've had too many men that were quitters. We've had too many men that were quitters. Any male can conceive a child, but it takes a man to be a father. There are plenty of times you could have quit. Plenty of times you could have walked away. Plenty of times you could have got into a whining spirit. Now, come on, buckle up, man. Uh, you might as well buckle your seat belts. A whining woman is like a dripping faucet. That's what Solomon said. Get mad at him. A whining woman is terrible. But a whining man ought to be put on a space shuttle and sent to Pluto. God did not make men to be whiners. He made men to be strong enough to stand up under the burdens of life. And you're going to have some burdens. And you're going to have some things that are hard to bear. But the sons of Issachar cannot just bear their burden. They can bear a double burden. I know men that have not only raised their children, but raised children that were not theirs, and women that have done the same thing. But when he saw a picture of future rest, he was motivated by the vision of his destiny, and he stood up under the double load, and he carried it forward. God's looking for some men today that say the load may get heavy, but I am a strong man. Well, Brother Mike, that's just toxic masculinity. We'll get into that later. <laughs> You're strong men. No real woman wants a weak man. A real woman wants a strong man. A man that will be strong in the spirit, strong intellectually, strong enough to provide, strong enough to promote, strong enough to protect. Oh, I feel like I'm in the military today. I'm almost going to say, let me hear a growl, tigers. <laughs> strong. This, this church wouldn't have been here except for a strong man who was its founder and a strong woman that walked beside him. And if you're wondering about where we're going, you're not going to have a limp-wristed weakling standing in this pulpit. It didn't start that way. It's not going to continue this way. We're going to have the power of God in this house. 
We're not going to be diminished by the attack of the enemy. We will not fear. We will fulfill our great commission. Oh, God, you have me say it almost every week now. If the Lord tarries long enough, my prayer and my vision is that there will be a time when we are so strong financially in this church that we will send equal to its annual budget now around the world to support world mission. Brother Mike, you're going to get in trouble saying that. If you're looking for trouble. No, that was a few weeks ago. Anyway, you would have had to be here anyway. That's all. Number two. Sons of Issachar. They call people up to a higher place. These kind of men, godly men. Call people up to a higher place. Deuteronomy 33, 18 and 19. And of Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. Now, Zebulun and Issachar are often mentioned together, so he's talking about both of them. Notice the rest of the verse. They shall call the people unto where? Unto the mountain. Men of God call people up to a higher place. I don't know about you, but I had a daddy that told me if he said I could do it, I could do it. I had that kind of dad. He, he, he dripping wet at his heaviest was about 155 to 160 pounds. Wasn't a very big man, but I can remember out on our little farm, he pastored, but we had some horses because Jesus has them and knows that we ought to. <laughs> and I can remember we'd be out cutting wood. We'd cut down a tree, and there'd be a log, you know, this big around and long and green wood and heavy. And I'm a little skinny teenager. And he'd say, get over there on the end of that log, boy. Let's pick this up and move it. We only have to move it five or six feet. Let's move that long. I can remember I'd look at Dad and say, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> and I can remember Dad, and he'd say, he'd say, son, the motto of the CBs in World War II was two words, can do. And he said, son, I know how strong you are. You don't. I do. I know you think you can't lift your end of the log, but I know you're big enough now to lift that end of the log. So get over there and grab it and growl. That was his phrase. Grab it and growl. And I'd go over there. Well, if Dad said I can, he's calling me up to a higher place. Come on, anybody getting this? I see myself as a little skinny teenager that can't pick that up yet. But my dad's vision of me, come on somebody. My dad's vision of me says I can. My dad's vision of me says I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. My dad's vision of me says I can do all things through Christ for strengthening me. My dad's vision of me is if I say you can do it, you can do it. Get over there, son. Grab it and growl. We need men today that call people up to a higher place. We've got enough people trying to get us to live low. Come on, how many know that uh, this is plain talk Mike today? We've got people trying to get us to live low. I'm tired of hearing this phrase, the new normal. So I've got another phrase. It's called God's next new super normal. The new normal. You're just going to have to get used to it. It's never going to be like it was. You might as well just settle. Just settle. Just go ahead and understand. It's always going to be this way. We're never going to come out. I want to tell you something. I come from a lineage that when Pearl Harbor went up in smoke and the Japanese could have invaded on the West Coast, that that greatest generation said, we will mobilize and Rosie the Riveter will make the planes that my daddy would go fight. I'm tired of defeatist men. I'm tired of whining politicians. I'll tell you what I'm really tired of since I'm stepping off in here today. 
I'm tired of weak need, vacillating, limp-wristed, gutless, no spine preachers that don't have an ability to stand without fear and proclaim the Word of God. Don't worry, folk, I'm not going to overload today. Just hang in here. A few years ago, a candidate was running for president. And that candidate met with a lot of ministers one day while he was running. And one of the ministers said to this candidate, said, We really like you. We're really supporting you. But if you could just tone down the rhetoric, it would make it easier. And I love what that man said. He said, Fellas, you've been toning down the rhetoric for decades. And that's why we're in the mess we're in. After I preach this message, son, we may need to go cut wood today. Glory to God. (laughs) We need men who are not satisfied with living in the new normal, but are actively engaged in leading others to live in new heights of divine achievement, new heights of leadership, new heights of success. Folks, our greatest days are not behind us. All Jesus needs is some men and women to lead again. To call the church up to a higher plane. To call the family up to a higher plane. To call the nation up to a mountaintop. We used to sing this hymn, and it'd be good for men to do this today. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I love these verses. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay. Listen to this. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. I love the verse. I want to live above the world. Though Satan's darts at me are hurled, for faith has caught a joyful sound. It's the song of saints on higher ground. Hallelujah. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray till rest I've found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. And the chorus would sing, Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on Canaan's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant our feet on higher ground and men of God and women of God watching me and here today as leader in the house today may I call you up to higher ground may we have a higher praise may we have a higher worship may we have a higher prayer may we see more miracles may we see more breakthroughs may we see more people say I'm not satisfied here let's go up to higher ground But Brother Mike, there's giants in there. That's what they told Caleb. God had given him a mountain 40 years before. And they went into Canaan. And Moses is standing there one day, or Joshua rather. And, and Caleb comes up and says, I'm going up, uh, I'm going up over the weekend and I'm going to take my mountain. And some of them standing around and said, you can't do that. You're over 80 years old. You can't do that. And he said, watch my smoke. That's what he said in the Hebrew. It's in the Hebrew. Now, he said, what he said was, I'm as young in the Lord today as I ever was. And some of them were about to have a memorial service for Caleb and put his picture up. And about a dozen Amalekite giants came running right through the middle of their memorial service with Canaan and a cane in one hand and a spear in the other saying, and stay out. And I'm looking for men that are willing to move up. 
I'm looking for men that are saying, we're going to go on up. Or should I say, yeah, I'm going to say it. We're not going to keep this in the four walls of the church either. We Christian men and women have as much right to run for office in the United States of America as anybody does. And we have a right to say we believe in the Word of God. The Holy Bible is the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of the living God. We have a right as Americans, and it's time Christian men stood up and said, we're going to love everybody, but we're going to stand for something, and we're not going to fall for anything. Boy, Dewey, you better pray. I feel like, hallelujah. I feel like combat boots on up in here. Brother Mike, you better hurry. It could be 12 o'clock, and I care. <laughs> we'll, we'll get close. Number three, the sons of Issachar offer sacrifices of righteousness. They offer sacrifice. Deuteronomy 33, 19. They shall call the people up into the mountain, and there they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness. Not sacrifices or good works to make, make us righteous, for we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ by what Jesus did, but rather the proof of a right relationship with God in the way we live. Because we're in right relationship with God, we men do not hesitate to do whatever he requires to advance his kingdom. We'll sacrifice our time. We'll sacrifice our treasure. We'll sacrifice our skill. We will sacrifice our very lives if necessary. That's the kind of men I'm talking about. Men that make sacrifices. Folks, have you had a father in your life that made sacrifices? I had a dad in my life that made sacrifices for us. There were times he didn't buy things for himself, but he bought things for us. He wanted us to have things, sacrifices. Next, they discover, un they discover and uncover hidden treasures. Deuteronomy 33, 19, they shall call the people into the mountain. There they shall offer the sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall suck the abundance of the seas and of treasure hid in the sand. Real men of God are uncoverers and discoverers. In fact, let me say it right. They discover and then they uncover. Now, this scripture has prophetic significance. Not until 1934 was this prophecy notably in fulfillment. When Haifa's Bay became one of the great harbors of the Mediterranean Sea and commerce affected the whole world, the Bible said they shall suck the abundance of the seas. The great oil pipeline path across what was then known as Palestine that was Israel all along, can I hear an amen, amen. was first opened in 1935. Until then, this prophecy fell far short of fulfillment. But 3,400 years after Moses said they will uncover hidden riches in the sea and in the sand, Israel is now uncovering oil and natural gas, and God's word is true. But I want to make this spiritual as well as physical. They discover and they uncover opportunities. Come on, guys. Keep your eyes open for opportunities. Opportunities. A friend of mine, of all things, and he's a good investor, and of all things, and I'm not telling you to do this, I'm not your investor, uh, uh, I'm not your financial manager, get one, but, but I'm not it, uh, except tell you the kingdom economics. But a friend of mine, Dogecoin comes out, and it's a joke. And the founder said it was a joke. But my friend discovered opportunities in it. And so far it's made over $400,000 because of it. it. Takes a lot to get you folk excited, doesn't it? I just, it's $400,000 is nothing to you. Praise God, I'll expect a $40,000 tithe check next week. Amen. <laughs> I think I'll try that again. $400,000.
Well, money doesn't thrill me. Well, we can have your funeral service this afternoon. I, I kind of enjoy it. The big one, Elizabeth. <laughs> I didn't say I love it. I enjoy it. Amen. I enjoy giving it. I enjoy spreading the gospel. I enjoy blessing people. Amen. Well, I just don't agree with that. Well, I'll try hard not to bless you with any of it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, I'm feeling honor today, Carol. I just, there's an honor. It's Father's Day. Hallelujah. You discover hidden opportunities. And you uncover those opportunities. Not just financial, but in every realm. You discover and uncover hidden potential in other people. Men can see and discover and uncover potential in the next generation. When I'm dealing with young people and my young protégés and young people in the church, I don't see them where they are. I see them where they're going to be. I see what's going to happen. I see things in them they don't see in themselves. Why? I'm a son of Issachar. I'm a discoverer. And I'm an uncoverer. I was sitting with a young man in a restaurant months ago, and he's a young protégé of mine. And I was telling him some things. And he, about himself, and he said, he said, he said, I, I just don't see that in me. I said, right, that's why I'm here. I do see it in you, and I'll speak it into you, and I'll give you some ways to uncover it. Come on, somebody. Come on, guys. Don't just look at what you've done. Find some. And I want to say this. We've got a whole generation of fatherless men. Find some young man and be a mentor to that young man. Be a discoverer and an uncoverer. Number next. Oh, you ladies are going to like this. Sons of Issachar have no problem allying with strong women. Sons of Issachar. Boy, it got quiet right there. Come on. Sons of Issachar have no problem allying with strong women. Judges 5.15, and the princes of Issachar were with Deborah. Now, who was Deborah? Deborah was a strong woman. Deborah was a warrior princess before Zena ever came on the scene. That's a long way back. It's a long way back. She was a warrior princess. Barak wouldn't go to war. He was afraid, General Barak. So Deborah got in the chariot to lead. And the Bible said Issachar was with her. Real strong men of Issachar are not intimidated by allying with a strong woman. I live with a strong woman. Strongest woman I know on this planet I'm married to. She's strong. She's strong in faith. She's strong enough to make me not want to walk over here any farther. <laughs> she knows the camera. But I'm not intimidated by a strong woman. <laughs> She's strong in faith. She's one of the wisest women I've ever been around. She's a confidant. I've watched her when ministry time early in, in, in our time together and early in our ministry life wasn't always easy. I can remember her working at a church as a secretary during the day and then working as a waitress in the evening. I watched her raise children, strong woman. I've watched her look at me and say, baby, I love you, and if you feel this is God, but I don't, and you need to listen to me. And thank God I've listened to her. And she was right a lot of times. Go ahead. <laughs> She's a strong woman. I don't have a problem with that. A strong man will love a strong woman. He will ally with a Deborah in the kingdom of God. But he will not tolerate a strong Jezebel. A strong man 
will not tolerate a Jezebel. Not for a minute. And there is a Jezebel spirit in America today. And if you don't believe it, and I've heard preachers say, nowhere in the Bible does it talk about a Jezebel spirit. No, but in the Bible it talks about these people in the Old Testament were given to us for examples of what to do and what not to do and what to watch out for. So when you see Absalom, we know that his spirit was a, was a, a, a flatterer in order to get a advantage. If you look at Jezebel, we know that she tried to intimidate, to manipulate, to dominate, to incarcerate. And a strong man will not ally with a Jezebel. And there can never be a Jezebel without a weak-kneed Ahab. Without a weak-kneed Ahab. And a woman of God will never want to be a Jezebel. Never want to be a Jezebel. And a man of God will never want to be abusive and dominating and mean-spirited against his wife. The key to this is... 100, 100 marriages, not 50, 50. Actually, the key to it is 100, 100, 100. I love the Lord 100% of my life, and Karen loves the Lord 100% of her life, and I love her 100% with my life, and she loves me back with 100, 100, 100, 100. It's a 300% marriage. Now, are there any of you single ladies watching me? Don't look for a mouse. Find a man. And uh, we're going to step out here and walk on water right now. <laughs> Guys, if you're single, if they try to dominate you while you're dating, if the engagement is the dream, marriage is the wake-up call. And if she's mean-spirited and manipulative, when you're dating her, whoo, it's going to get rough after you marry her. Well, I love her, and I'm going to change her. Right. And purple pigs fly backwards. You ain't changing nothing. That's what dating is about. Well, I'm preaching better than you're shouting right now. Come on, all you ladies ought to be shouting too. I'm telling the truth. He's, he's laughing in Spanish down here. He's laughing. <laughs> and, and he works the same way. Ladies, if you're single, you're dating a guy, and he's sloppy and lazy and, and won't provide and won't honor you and won't open the door for you, guess what? <laughs> if engagement is the dream, marriage is the wake-up call. And you'll be looking at him in about three months at breakfast, and he's doing this. <laughs> I don't like my eggs this way. Well, I'm going to get back to the Word. Come on. We'll do a, do a marriage seminar another time. Come on. Sons of Issachar. <laughs> More angels, Lord. I need protection right now. Sons of Issachar don't have any problem allying with strong women. Hey, ladies, we want you to be strong in the Lord. We want you to be strong in faith. We want you to be strong in the Word of God. We'll come right in the chariot with you. And a twofold cord is not easily broken. And two are better than one. Amen. Amen. I just saved somebody's life watching me today. I know I did. Number six. Y'all learned anything today on Father's Day? Yes. Sons of Issachar are valiant men of might. Sons of Issachar are valiant men of might. First Chronicles 7, 5. And their brethren among all the families of Issachar were valiant men of might. Reckoned in all by their genealogies, four score and seven thousand. If you, if you read a translation, it says this. And their brother in among all of the brothers in among all the families of Issachar were brave, strong, and mighty men of strength and influence. Now I'm going to elaborate on what I started on. There is a diabolical, demonic attack today on masculinity. 
It is purposeful. It is strategic. It is tactical. It is funded. It comes from the pit of hell. And it is alive and well in America today. You will hear the phrase toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. I heard one say the other day, a reporter, happened to be a man or a male. And he said, toxic, violent men have never solved anything. Well, it seemed like that on Concord and Lexington, there were some toxic, violent men called minute men that solved the problem of Britain's oppression and gave birth to our nation. I, I could be reading it wrong, but it seems that way. It, it seems like there were some toxic, violent men who went across the English Channel and stormed Omaha Beach and solved the problem of Nazism and fascism and gave birth to the land of Israel again. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they went and negotiated. Well, Brother Mike, are you saying there's a room for being strong and violent? Yeah. Now, we're not talking about physical violence unless it's required. But if it is, your wife shouldn't have to protect you. Come on, don't, don't sit there, strong woman. Really pray right now. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Well, Jesus wouldn't do that. Jesus, you know, the sweet Jesus boy. The sweet Jesus man. Uh -huh. yeah, let, me give you a, let me give you a little lesson on the sweet Jesus man. Hey! My father's house is to be a house of prayer. Yeah. You turkeys have made it into a den of thieves. You want to see my lesson today? Here it is. He over, Brother Mike, that's so violent. Yeah. Come on, look right at me, critic. I'm not talking about, I don't ever want to physically harm anybody. I don't ever want to have to. But baby, you come into my house and try to hurt my wife, and I'll preach a sermon to you about healing while you bleed. I'll bind up the broken wounds. I'll ask God to spare your life. It'll be a good altar call. You'll want to know Jesus. Yeah, it's called real authentic pastor up in here. I find out somebody as pastor of this church, somebody's trying to harm one of them. The sheep of my flock? I'm not into that, boys. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> now stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. I don't mean I'm going to hurt anybody physically. I'd never do that. So is there ever a time? Here, Jesus said this, a strong man armed keepeth his palace and his goods are in peace unless a stronger one comes into his home and overcomes him. But our warfare is not primarily physical. Our warfare is primarily spiritual. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of spiritual wickedness in high places. And I want to say to you strong men, you are not the toxic poison. You are the antidote to the poison in the land. Be strong in your character. Be strong in your love for your wife. Be strong in your love for your children and your grandchildren. Be strong in your love for God. Defend your nation. Thank God your son 
goes away on deployments for months at a time, far under the waves, so our nation can have somebody preach the gospel in America and fund it around. Thank God for men and women, too, that are strong. Don't buy into this, guys. Come on, anybody loving me at all here today? Don't buy into this stuff. Men are made to do this. Provide, promote, and protect. Say that with me. Provide, promote, and protect. Say it again. Provide, promote, and protect. And finally, number seven. The sons of Issachar are men of wisdom and know how to lead. The sons of Issachar are men of wisdom and know how to lead. First Chronicles 12, 32, which were men that had understanding of the times and to know what Israel ought to do. And the heads of them were 200. And watch, all their brethren were at their commandment. A translation says this, and of the children of Issachar, which were men that perceived what the times were and discerned what should be done and were able to lead their brethren. Oh, folks, we need men today that fit that description. Men of wisdom that understand the times, timing, when to do, what to do, the right thing at the right time. We need to understand the times historically and prophetically. Folks, we need men and women, but we need men that understand we are living in the days that preachers have been talking about for years. We're living in the last days. How do you know? I'll teach on prophecy this fall. All you have to do is read the Word of God. There is a convergence happening. There's always been earthquakes. There's always been something. All these signs, war here, war there, rumor of war here. There's always been. But Jesus said, when you see all these things beginning to come to pass. And what he meant was, you see all the signs converging. They're converging. 1948, Israel is back into the land. 1967, Jerusalem is no longer trodden under the foot of Gentiles. Jesus said, this generation shall not pass away until all be fulfilled. Understand the times. Do we? We've got to win souls. We've got to win souls. Hector, we've got to win your generation. We've got to tell them the truth of the gospel. They need more than concerts. They need a transformation from an experience with a living God. Come on, somebody. Nothing wrong with concerts, but lead me to a transformer that can change my life. Oh, we need men of wisdom. Doug, men of understanding. Doug, would you come? Men of understanding. Men of wisdom. And we need men that are leaders. The Bible said they, they could command their brethren. Leaders. Guys, if you still have children in your home, be the high priest of your home. Guys, lead your homes. And you know what, fellas? Just because they've moved out and they're grown doesn't mean you've abdicated being a high priest in their life. Speak your mind. Do it in love, but do it with wisdom. But do it with courage. Speak your mind. If you've got children in your home or your grandchildren come and visit you, be leaders. Be leaders. God's intended for you to be. Lead by example. No, you won't always be perfect. I know what some of you are thinking when I teach this way. You look back and you say, boy, I failed as a daddy there, and I failed as a daddy there. And if I could undo that, well, you can't. But the Bible says God can fix your mess-ups. And all of us have come short in some way. Yeah, but Brother Mike, some dad is watching me today or is in here, and you're thinking, I, I messed up so badly. 
that it looks like my influence my children can't ever be restored. Well, here's the good news of the gospel. When you mess up, if you'll fess up, God can fix it up. And he's able to restore the years, the locust of Eden, the palmer worm. He'll give you back those years, not chronologically, but in influence. I want to finish this message, and then we're going to pray for all the men. What this dying world could use is a willing man of God who dares to go against the grain and will work without applause. A man who raised the shield of faith, protecting what is pure, whose love is tough and gentle. A man whose word is sure. Can I get an amen? Listen to the next phrase. God doesn't need an orator who always knows what to say. He doesn't need authorities to reason him away. He doesn't need an army to guarantee a win. Jesus just needs a few good men. Men full of compassion who laugh and love and cry. Men who will face eternity and aren't afraid to die. Men who will fight for freedom and honor once again. Jesus needs a few good men. Some of you watching today are saying, well, I'm not that good a man. I've got things in my life. I have things in my past. I, I don't come from a good background. Some of you may be feeling that today here in this room. Let me give you this verse. He calls the broken derelict whose life has been renewed. He calls the one who has the strength to stand up for the truth. Guys, listen to this. Enlistment lines are open, and he invites you to come in. Jesus just needs a few good men. What he needs today, a few good men who can laugh and love and cry. Men who are tough and gentle at the same time. And one of the saddest verses in the scripture is this. And I looked for a man amongst them to stand in the gap and make up the hedge before me for the land that I should not destroy it. And I found none. That will never be said of FWC. Jesus, if you need a few good men, we're here. I said, Jesus, if you need a few good men, we're here. Who can face eternity and not be afraid to die. So the next generation. Jesus needs a few good men. Hallelujah. I want every father and every man in the place, young, middle-aged, or old, I want you to stand to your feet, please, all across this building. Those of you watching online, we want to pray for you as well. I feel so stirred right now to say this, and I don't know why. But guys... There is no future in your yesterdays. And you can never move forward looking in the rear view mirror of your memories. I don't know why I feel so stirred to say it. Especially those watching. 
But Pastor Mike, I, I messed up. I've done this. I've done this. I, I, yeah, but he makes all things new. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. If you've never experienced that transformation, this Father's Day can be the beginning of the greatest life you've ever known. All you have to do is ask Him to be your Lord and Savior. He'll do that today. And you get a clean slate and you can start over. He needs a few good men. I know it'll be a little crowded, but I feel real stirred about it. I wanted the men to just come and stand around the front and up and down. Would you come? Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Just come forward. If you feel better or if you need to sit, come and sit on the front row. That'll be fine, too. But I want you to come forward. Just come on. We're going to pray for every man in this building, not individually, but collectively. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Jesus, you have a few good men here. Sir, reporting for duty, sir. Here in these last days. Sir, no excuses. Yes, sir. Reporting for duty. In these last few battles. In these last days. To bring a revival to America. To win the lost at any cost. There's so much stirring in me recently about winning souls. I just can't even tell you how much it's stirring at me. And we're going to have training to teach you and train you if you don't know how. I'm talking about personally winning souls. I'm talking about in your world, winning souls. Reaching out to people. Touching their lives. I want you gentlemen to hear me and then I'm going to pray for you. I want you to be the high priest of your family. Listen, even if they don't listen. I know some of you are having strange children and they don't listen. You can still be the high priest and pray over them every day. They may have spit in your eye. They may have called you every vile name that they can think of. And I know because some of you have shared it with me. That's all right. You can still be the high priest of those kids. You never stop praying over them. Some of you up here have shared with me, I have children that don't even, I can't see my grandkids. They won't let me even see my grandkids or talk to them. That's all right. You can still be the high priest. You can still pray over them. You can take their picture and pray over them every day. Father, if I never get the chance to speak into their lives, if I'm never allowed, send a laborer in their life, Lord. Send somebody in their life. I'll be the intercessor. I'll be the unknown man, but I'll be the high priest that'll pray. Guys, lead and love your wives. Lead and love your wives. If you're married and they're still alive on the earth, cherish them. Cherish them. The Bible said we're to love them as Christ loves the church and gave himself for it. The Bible said give honor to her as unto the weaker vessel. And that makes this culture mad because women say, well, we're not weak. That's not, not the point at all. It means they're like fine china. You don't put heavy loads on fine china. You put it out when the king or the governor comes to visit you. What it means is, it's not saying they're weak. It's saying that you are to honor them and love them as Christ loves the church. And guys, as your pastor, can I implore you to join me in this last day? I wish many times I did not know what I know. But I do. I don't mean just spiritually. I mean, I have proteges and people I know 
that are in influence. And uh, may I say this with all the love I have for my country. We're in big trouble. We are in big trouble. That's not a Republican statement or a Democrat statement. It's a statement of truth from a man of God who cares about his country. We must return to the God of our fathers. I said we must return to the God of our fathers. I want to say something to the ladies. Cherish these men. Honor these men. Love these men. Love your man. Be kind. A word from you that is cutting and mean can cut a man in the heart like no other word can. Nobody else. And sometimes they won't show it, but it cuts to the heart. Sometimes you're the only encourager we have. You're the only one that knows how to speak the words of encouragement to us. Honor your men. Men crave honor. We're not perfect, none of us. But we love you. And we crave you to honor us as a man of God. Can I hear an amen from the ladies? I want you to stretch your hand out toward me and look right at me today, if you would, please, sirs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I pray for you, men, that God will strengthen you with a new strength, a new might, a new wisdom, a new ability, a new vigor, a new ability as I look into your eyes and I pray that God will give you discernment and He will give you wisdom and He will give you knowledge that is not your own, that you'll be a discoverer and an uncoverer. And I pray the blessing of God over you. May the Lord bless you. May He keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. I pray that you'll be a phenomenal father, a phenomenal grandfather, a phenomenal husband. Come on, ladies, be in agreement with me out there. I pray that God will strengthen you. I pray God will bring healing into your body. I pray where you're hurting in your memories and in your emotions and where you have felt like a failure, that God will give you new strength in that area and that you will rise up strong. And I decree that that shall be so. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the only begotten Son of the living God.